All right, Swift race time. It has been a while since I raced on Swift. Just gonna look under my Swift power profile, and see when the last time was. Last race I did was August 12th, so uh, about three weeks since my last one. And, my, and then it was a month before that one. So yeah, I haven't been racing a lot on Zwift. I've been doing more uh, training. But first things first, oops, not that. I wanna do this. I'm gonna put my discs on for this route. Got the new Pinarello. My real life bike is a Zwift painted Pinarello. So I gotta ride the, gotta ride the dogma in game. All right, it's joint event. We'll talk a little bit about this event. <laughs> didn't didn't quite get an adequate warm up today, but here we are. So so today is the first race of the September Z Racing Series. First of the five races. It's on Rolling Highlands, two laps. So 23k. Oh, I forgot this has an assigned bike. So I was going to be on the Pinarello anyway. I want to race all five races this month because it unlocks a custom paint job for the Pinarello. And here's the thing, that paint job matches my real life bike. It's the, it's the paint job that Swift commissioned from Pinarello when they did a custom run of Pinarellos, which I got to be a part of. It wasn't like Swift gave me the bike, I had to buy it still, but it was a good price and an amazing bike. So here we are. Got to unlock the colorway so my Swift bike can match my outdoor bike. Uh, today's race is a uh, Zwift racing score race. So technically still a test kind of a race, a Zwift Labs event. I'm in the 10 category race. So the categories are pretty narrow. My current racing score is 587. So I'm in the 550 to 600 group, which you can see at the top right. Which means in theory, I'm kind of in the upper, upper one third of this group. And this is a decent course for me. I don't like to finish. Finishes on the breakaway Bray uphill. It's a little bit of an uphill with kind of a false flat after that. That false flat always gets me. I run out of juice. So we'll see how it goes. Not a lot of riders in this event. I think 27 were signed up. It's not going to be a big group. So it'll be interesting. It'll be good to race again. I've been doing a training plan, a trainer road training plan, actually. Sticking to it mostly, but not religiously. But just kind of using it as my default ride plan when I don't have something else I want to do. And it's been good. I'll probably write a post on Zwift Insider about my experience with Trainer Road in Zwift. Uh, you can see I've got the new HUD. I'm part of the, uh, what they call the Zwift Collective, which gets the game releases a day early, usually a day early. And the new HUD's coming out tomorrow. So here we are. It's a configurable HUD. Here, I can show you real quick. So this top left element has four fields and you can configure them under settings. HUD, you've got seven different different fields you can choose from. Same seven fields for all four slots. So I've got cadence and heart rate, which of course you'll get. Then I've got average power and calorie burn. I've been working on dropping a little bit of weight the last month or so. So kind of looking at calories a little closer than usual. 
Okay, where are we at? Got a minute. Should probably turn my fan up. Oh, also. Right here. And right here. I've got two different sweat biosensors going. This one's the H drop. This one's from NYX. And I'm recording this activity in the sweat info that they uh, that they put out in their respective apps. And that'll all be in a Zwift Insider review at some point too. Because I think sweat info is especially important for Zwifters. Speaking of sweating, you got 10 seconds to go. <laughs> all right. Only five riders. Leading here is usually pretty easy. Flat to the downhill. Got steering today. We'll use that to our advantage. And build. Yeah. All right. So we'll use it here. And goes away. <laughs> it's not going to go hard yet. See how the legs are feeling. See in the new HUD, the top left, the power zone bars. That's a cool feature. It shows how much time you've spent in each zone relative to the other ones. It shows your current zone as well. It's the one that's kind of highlighted in white. This is easy so far, as you can tell by how I'm bouncing between Blue and white, blue and green. That's zone two and zone three. We'll be hitting red eventually. Ouch. Key selection points on this router. Breakaway Bray and the climb up to Hulkscrew Castle. I don't think we're going to drop a lot of riders on those. They're not. They're not long and hard enough. It seems like a lot of the riders in these lab races are more experienced racers anyway. So we started with 27, it looks like. I predict we finish with 
15 to 20 in the front group. I don't have Saucer's Lift on today. I wanted to just use Lift's new HUD. Keep it clean. Interesting place for an anvil. Well, the other key selection spot is the the drag up to the downhill that we just did on the, at the start. That's the longest climb. Not a steep climb. Like probably two or three percent on average. But you can attack there. Make it interesting. All right, breakaway break coming up. I'm gonna try to ride this with the least amount of effort I can, based on his first go. <clears throat> Start near the front. You'll see the uh, new head element elevation profile pops up. Automatically pops up when it needs to. A lot of guys are steering.
Some ride ons. More rounds. That was the longest climb of this route. Very draftable though. Nobody going hard yet. Package.
Now I'll let him go. Where to use the anvil? I want to use it on the descent after Corkscrew Castle. It's a hard one. First person view. Oops, I hit the wrong button. <laughs>
I'm gonna save my feather for the finish. It's the best power up for it. Attack on the front. <laughs> Thank you. 
Big attacks on this climb. People are going to try to go long. If I can follow the wheels, I will. Otherwise, we'll have to gamble. I hope the group closes that gap before breakaway Bray. Got to recover. Thank you. 
Well, eighth place. I swear, I get eighth place in half the races I do. <laughs> it's my spot. And I don't know why. <sighs> okay, let's see what the what the sweat sensors are saying. Chest says nothing. Not a good sign. <laughs> this one, the H drop, says I've lost 16 and a half fluid ounces and a thousand milligrams of sodium, basically. That's in 49 minutes. Probably close to accurate, maybe a little low. <clears throat> Interesting, now that I'm watching the app for this one, it's like catching up. It keeps adding how much sweat at them. 11, 12, 13, let's see where it stops, 14, 15, all right, I'm going to save this activity. I guess I can't show the HUD yet, so I'm going to hide. I'll show that. Make sure it's all. Hmm. All right. <clears throat> now, some of my racing scores 594. I went from 587 to 594. Yeah. This one says 17.5 fluid ounces have sweated. 1,029 milligrams of electrolytes. This one says 17.5 and 1,068. Those are startlingly similar. So that's good. I've done a few different tests at this point and they haven't always been similar and I'm trying to figure out what changes it. Uh, let's see, what else? Go look at my profile, my companion app to see what it says. It got updated. Yeah, 594.
You can have the results in the companion app. Well, so now I'm heading outside for a endurance pace ride with a buddy of mine. <clears throat> Got a 90 minute ride on a zone two pace just to keep him some company. Anyway, thanks for watching everybody. See you out there.